Hi, y'all. This is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic vision from the Holy Spirit and a word from the Lord um, that has to do with, um, there's actually a few different things the Lord shared with me the same night. And part of the message has to do with a violent political attack is what I heard. So I'm actually going to share that last. And the reason is because that's the order in which I heard these things. And I believe that everything else the Lord is sharing right, right here um, is very important and critical. And I believe uh, you know, the God wants, uh, honestly, this first part is probably even more important um, for the body than the, than the last part. So I'm encouraging you to watch the whole thing um, if you have the time. Uh, but that that uh, specific word of knowledge is going to come at the end. <clears throat> so I'm going to pray and then I'll jump right in. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you, Jesus, for your leading, for your voice. You're the good shepherd and we are the sheep. I just ask that you would reveal your heart to each person listening right now, and that if there's anyone that doesn't know you, that you would reveal yourself to them, Lord, as they listen. In Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Lord, for showing up in power. So here we go. Uh, this is this is the vision I saw from the Holy Spirit. And what I saw was uh, a, a picture, an image of Tabasco sauce, ketchup, and those little pickles in a jar, those little like miniature pickles. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, my people are settling for condiments when they could be having a steak. And y'all, when the Lord shares a word like this, especially when he, uh, you know, this is sounding very general. One thing I encourage you to do is to just pray about it and see if the Lord is saying this to you specifically, because the Holy Spirit doesn't just want us to accept a prophetic message that may be for a specific group in the body. It may be for the entire body, or it may be for the individuals only that God is wanting to confirm it to. So please pray about this and see if there's if this entire message or part of it applies to you. And I believe the Holy Spirit will confirm that to you. So he said, my people are settling for condiments when they could be having a steak. And he said, fresh from my pasture, cooked up to perfection. This is the difference between teaching oneself and being instructed by the Holy Spirit. And he said, when I'm in charge of the menu, the main course is me, my flesh, my life in you. So I know that might sound a little crazy, but I'm actually going to give some scriptural basis for that idea in a second here. And then, and then he said, I want to give you something to eat that will last a lifetime and beyond. Then he went on, went on to say, uh, and this is just as I was waiting upon the Lord and continuing to listen to what the Holy Spirit had to say. There, there, there's, a, there's a key there in hearing from the Lord. One of the most important parts of being able to hear from the Lord, one of the, one of the most important keys is just to spend time waiting upon the Lord. You know, you see that all through scripture. I waited upon the Lord and he heard me, you know, and he answered me. There, there's, just, there's so much emphasis on waiting in expectation. You know, not waiting in fear, but waiting in faith that God is going to show up and he's going to move and he's going to speak. So this is what he continued to say. The word is life. And, and the word was capitalized here, actually. The word is life. You know, I knew he's referring to Jesus. But it is only available to those who allow me to, pre to prep it or to prepare it. Prep is short for prepare. Feast on my words and you will never have a day where you go hungry. You'll never have to beg for bread because you'll be so overflowing with sustenance that you'll have enough to give away. I love that, that you'll have enough to give away. And then I heard, my life is available right now for those on this stream if you are willing to accept it. So this, I have pre-recorded this. This is not live, but it doesn't matter. What I've seen is that the Holy Spirit is able to work through Y'all, what I've experienced is I've gotten on videos that were recorded 30 years ago, and then the power of the Holy Spirit shows up. And, you know, it's like he's like pouring out of the screen, you know, out of the speaker who's already, the speaker might have passed away. It doesn't matter. God is not limited by space and time. He can show up. He, his his anointing can fall uh, through, through any means. You know, like Paul, uh, one of his handkerchiefs, people took this cloth from Paul and carried it around and touched sick people with it, and they got healed. It's because the anointing of the Holy Spirit was on that piece of cloth. And that's just what the Lord chose to use. So if you can see a video on YouTube that way, that, you know, or a book or whatever it is, you know, or a teaching on a, a CD or MP3 or whatever, God can use it and he can transfer the anointing through it and he can, he can move in power. 
So don't limit what God is willing and able to do through something like this. Um, and then, uh, he, yeah, he said, my life is available right now for those on this stream if you're willing to accept it. So I know one thing he's saying is if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I believe uh, that God is willing and wanting to reveal himself to you right now. And for some of those listening who don't know the Lord, you've been experiencing something while you're listening so far that you've never experienced before, or maybe it's been a long time. And you're asking that question, what is this? And this is the answer. It is the tugging of the Holy Spirit on your heart. You know, it may be a sense of peace. It may be a sense of the presence of God or the power of God in the room. It may be your body shaking or tingling or something like that. You know, I don't know exactly what it's going to feel like or seem like. But what that is, is it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, he's saying, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm real. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he can set you free right now. That's what he's saying. He can set you free right now. So if that's you, I'm going to actually pray at the end of this. And I'm encouraging you to join me in that prayer at the end. Don't put it off, y'all. It's not worth waiting to, to meet Jesus. You can meet him today. You can start a personal relationship with him. And y'all, he loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done, how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. He wants to invite you right into his family. So don't put that off. The other, the other thing I believe is, is that the Holy Spirit is wanting to not just fill people more with his, with his Spirit who already know Jesus, but I believe he's wanting to increase the accuracy and clarity of his voice. And this is something that, you know, we can all, we can all um, get better at is hearing the Lord. So I'm just going to give a personal example. You know, uh, I shared a word about a, a sign of war happening in July of this year, 2022. 20, uh, uh, and I shared that video, I think maybe a couple months back, maybe a month back or so. And in the video, I shared that verse where that talks about how we see in part and we prophesy in part. And we prophesy when we prophesy, we don't see the whole picture. And I was very upfront about that. And I said, hey, I don't know. You know, the Lord said there's going to be a sign of war happening in January. And, you know, and he said it was going to be something that's connected to something that happened a year after I was born. So that was like 1990, you know, 1991, that that range right there. And y'all, I went and I Googled, I researched this and I was very clear in the video, you know, where I shared it. I said, I don't know if this is what he's referring to or not, but I said, but when I did some research, I found that that's when I think it's, I think it's called the Persian Gulf war. I'm pretty sure, but there was that war that happened. And I said, I think the Lord might be referring to this. And now I'm starting to rethink that y'all. And this is just me being honest about, Hey, I shared what I had heard from the Lord, but I didn't get the full picture, you know? And I, I definitely, you know, said, hey, this may be it, it may not. Now I'm starting to think it's the, what the Lord was saying is a lot more to do with what's actually happening in the Ukraine and Russia. And somebody left a comment on that video saying, did you know that the Ukraine left Russia? I think it was 1991. So I haven't researched that yet to, to confirm it. But to me, it was just a clear indication of, yeah, I believe I heard accurately, but I didn't, I didn't get the full picture, you know? And uh, the assumption that I made about what the Lord was saying was actually probably not what he was actually saying. So there, there's an example right there, y'all. We can all get better at hearing from the Lord. We can get better at discerning his voice and interpreting what he's saying and knowing what to do with it and how to share that if we're supposed to share it. So anyways, personal example, um, you know, the, the a good illustration of what I believe the Lord is saying on this video is um, the difference between me cooking dinner and my wife cooking dinner for our family. You know, sometimes uh, my wife will spend days cooking something. And, and she'll be like, especially if somebody's company's coming over, she'll spend days ahead of time preparing and cooking one dish and then the next dish and then this course and that course and dessert and all sorts of things and the sides, you know, and and then like, it's like the best food you've ever had in your life, you know? And then for me, I like, I you know, I, I get in the kitchen at like 6.30 and, and the kids are already hungry and they're sitting there waiting to eat. And I'm like, do y'all feel like tuna salad? You know, like <laughs> I'm like, let me throw a frozen pizza into the oven real fast. And hopefully you're not too hungry by the, the time it's ready. You know, it's just it's it's a world of difference between one person preparing the food and another person. And when we are reading the scripture, this is uh, one of the things, the points I believe the Holy Spirit is making when we're reading the scripture, there's a world of difference between us diving into the word and eating this, you know, consuming this through our own interpretation and our own thoughts and allowing the Holy Spirit to interpret it for us and to speak through it. And also when we're waiting upon the Lord and we're listening to him in that still 
still quiet place with the Lord, you know, that secret place. And in worship, there's a big difference between us trying to hear what we want to hear from the Lord and actually laying a, aside all of our agendas and saying, Lord, what do you actually want to say? And then spending the time waiting upon the Lord until he speaks. It, it's night and day, y'all. It's night and day. And that's what the Lord is saying here. If, if we will let him, uh, he, he says, uh, the word is life, but is only available to those who allow me to prep it. See, the word is here, you know, the food's there, but some people don't get life out of it. It, it. it actually acts the opposite to them, and it's because they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to prep it. So here we go. <clears throat> um, here's a couple of biblical, uh, just um, some biblical uh, backing for this. Um, John 1, 14 says, and the word became flesh, and, and that's talking about Jesus, but he is the word. You know, it's more than just words on a page. It's a relationship with the creator of the universe. And dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. So there's, there's a uh, standard right here. You know, anytime somebody uses the scripture to only beat people over the head and, you know, and they're all about truth and they're saying, you better shape up or else, you know, and they take that stance, they're missing the person of Jesus Christ because Jesus uh, the glory of Jesus was revealing the grace and truth of God, not just the truth. You know, it wasn't truth spoken in anger and judgment. It's truth spoken in love. And then the opposite is true, too. When someone says, oh, God's just full of grace and, and you know, there really is no real truth. It's all relative. You know, when they come at it from that perspective, they're they're missing the person of Jesus again because he wasn't just grace. He's also truth. So you have to have both, you know, and you have to have Jesus himself. For that to actually work, you know, for 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 right theology to ha to happen when we're reading the the word, for us to to digest it the right way, but also for us to apply it the right way in the world. This is something else I heard. Um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, "Jump up and down, the bride is readying herself." And then I heard, "Pleasures forevermore in my hand." And and this is a uh, Psalm sixteen eleven. He's referring to, it says, you will make known to me the way of life in your presence is fullness of joy in your right hand. There are pleasures forever. So this is what's so amazing is like life. When, when you get some bread, have you ever eaten some bread? That's just like the best bread you've ever, ever had in your life. Like that homemade fresh bread, especially sourdough, man, I could go for some sourdough bread. That stuff is good. But have you ever tasted that versus like old stale store-bought bread that's been sitting on the shelf for a month or something? You know, it's just the difference is night and day, and we there's a lot of joy that the Holy Spirit wants to share with us through the Word, not just through reading the Word. We can read the Word and experience this overcoming sense of joy and freedom in Christ, but He also wants us to live the Word, you know, in that relationship with Jesus, and and that joy is going to overflow into every area of our life. I'm gonna I'm gonna read. Um, this is what Jesus says in John six thirty five. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. Y'all, wouldn't it be amazing if we didn't have to hunger? And what he's saying is we're not going to be uh, hopeless anymore. We're going to be full of hope in this life. We're going to be full of joy and peace. And we're going to have life building experience every day instead of a, a, a you know, dead, a deadly experience, which is what the flesh produces. And, and uh, then he says, but I I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. And so this all comes back to belief in who Jesus is and what he did on the cross. And if we're not experiencing that life, we just need to come straight back to belief that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. And the way he produced that uh, that path for us, or the way he, he allowed us into his presence was through the cross, was through his sacrifice. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. I love that. It's like if you're tasting of the life of Jesus Christ, you don't have to be afraid. The Word actually says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be afraid of judgment and condemnation anymore. Why? Because we have His life inside of us. For I have not come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of Him. No, He says, for I have come down uh, from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. So for those listening who, um, you know you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you might be here, you know, 
I don't know, to see what this is all about. You might be here to criticize and that's okay. I'm, you know, I'm still willing to be your friend and, and willing to accept criticism when necessary. Um, but, but Jesus is offering you a gift today, a gift that's far beyond everything else you've ever experienced in this life. Anything that anyone else could ever give you, you know, he says, uh, that any, everyone who beholds the son and believes in him will have eternal life, will have eternal life. That's a promise, a promise from the, the God who loves you and created you. So I'm actually going to pray uh, right now, and then I'm going to share the rest of that uh, word and, and, and that word of knowledge about the political attack. So if you know you, you need to meet Jesus, don't put it off. Pray with me right now. And this is not a magical prayer. The prayer doesn't save you. But this is a decision that has to happen in your heart. It happens right here and where we say, I'm done with this world. I'm done with this life. I, I can't make this work on my own. I need saving. I need delivering. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, save me. I believe and I choose to believe that you are the Son of God and you came to the earth and lived a perfect life and you died on a cross taking the punishment for my sin upon yourself. On the third day, you rose again and now you are seated at the right hand of the Father. And I thank you that you are willing to forgive me because of your grace, because of your mercy and your compassion. I ask that you would just fill me with the Holy Spirit right now and start a new relationship with me, a friendship that will last throughout eternity. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, please let me know in the comments. That is very encouraging for me to hear, but also it gives me a chance to just celebrate with you and also to pray for you. So y'all, I am so proud of you if you prayed along with me. And don't uh, don't take this as like the final step. This is the start of a relationship. Start to seek the Lord every day. Start to read the word every day and get involved in a local body of believers. It doesn't have to be a traditional church, but the word encourages us to not... Uh, to, to continue to meet together with other believers so that we can be built up in faith and we can build them up as well and we can serve one another. Uh, Y'all, we need that. We need fellowship with, with other Christians, with other people uh, in our life who can help us and do life with us. So, so please uh, take that encouragement. And oh, also please go uh, pray about getting baptized. I highly encourage you to do that. That It's a sign of that decision to follow Jesus. So if you've never gotten baptized after making that decision, um, it's, it's definitely worth doing, and the, and the Lord actually, actually asks us to do it in the Word. And y'all, some really good stuff is going to come from that if, if you take that step of obedience. Um, so here we go. <laughs> that same night, after I heard uh, everything else I've just shared, um, I saw another vision. And what I saw was a vision of an elephant raising its trunk, and then it opened its mouth, and it stuck out its tongue. So I could see its tongue sticking out. And then from the side, I saw a crocodile lift up its head and it bit off the elephant's tongue. So it came from a side angle and it snapped off the elephant's tongue and literally bit it off. And then I saw the elephant in a stunned manner. It was stunned. It fell over and sank down into the water because of this, what just happened. Um, so it wasn't dead. I don't think, I think it was just stunned. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, a violent attack, political in nature, then he said, I want you to warn my people and I want you to pray. So I don't pretend to know, and then, and then there's something else in a second, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this first. I don't pretend to know why exactly the Lord um, gives some of these warnings. Um, I can give some reasons. One reason is so that we can pray against things. You know, um, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Like prayer makes a difference, you know. Uh, and, and, and I encourage you to pray anytime something like this is shared. Um, first off, pray and ask the Holy Spirit for confirmation, you know, because I don't claim to be perfect. I'm just sharing what I've seen and heard, um, you know, and, and a lot of times I've I experienced confirmations from the Lord before sharing. You know, I, I'm not like on here flippantly sharing um, because I value the fear of the Lord. I value the Lord's voice and I don't want to share things that I, you know, am not sure about. Um, so, so there is that aspect of it, but, but you can pray and you can uh, ask for confirmation yourself, but also 
um, I encourage you to pray. And I'm going to pray right now for whatever this is. I don't know exactly what it is. And then I'm going to share the rest. Holy Spirit, I just ask that whatever's happening in the political arena and whatever attack is, someone is planning or, or strategizing, I just ask that you would stop it, Lord, that you would uh, just rip the carpet out from underneath them and so that they can't move forward, Lord, with this plan, whatever it is, and that you would reveal it for what it is and that your kingdom would come and your will be, will be done and that you would protect people if that's what's needed in Jesus' name. And I just ask that you put the right people in the right place, Lord for your kingdom purpose in Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, another reason that God warns us of things and, and is just that, that idea of the Holy Spirit sharing a word of knowledge, which is like a gift in a gift of the spirit in scripture ahead of time so that the body can be encouraged in hearing God's voice and then seeing it take place, you know, and then also that it, it acts as a testimony to the, to unbelievers, to those who don't know Jesus who, who come in and say, wow, how, you know, how did you know this ahead of time? And the answer is, I didn't know anything. This is God. God is real. He can speak nowadays and he wants to speak through his people. Um, and I'm actually working on a, a lot of people have asked me about like, uh, you know, sharing the results of certain prophecies and things like that. I'm working on a very long, um, really uh, um, <clears throat> detailed response video that's going to show uh a lot of the prophecies I've shared over the last year and a half, and it's going to show the results of those. So um, please be patient. That's in the works right now. This is the next thing I heard. And this, to be honest, I don't know what this means. <laughs> this is what I heard. I heard the phrase, someone saying, run for president, run for president. It would be easy, they said. So that repeated phrase, run for president, run for president. It would be easy, they said. And then I heard, the Lord say, I'm going to tear down the walls of these mockers, those who say that I have no control over who stays in power. And that's all I've got to share with y'all. So y'all pray, pray about it. See what the Lord says. See what he confirms to you. And I hope this has been encouraging. And I love y'all. And I will see you next time.